Hey guys, this is Matt Brunet, and welcome to Movie News Weekly, hosted by Filmbook. Now, before we begin, let's take a look at what we got in this week's news, which includes a quiet comeback, remembering a sergeant, Amy in the ring, Sony's Chinese dragon, Spielberg's superhero, the villain of the Disney ride, the villain of the Disney sequel, interesting cons movies, DreamWorks' secret weapon, and the new Angry Stars. So with that said, let's get things started. What an amazing comeback! On its third weekend, the horror movie A Quiet Place made it back to first place at the box office this weekend after it gave the spot to Rampage last week. The film made a total of $22 million during the weekend, while the video game movie wasn't too far behind in second on its second weekend by getting $21 million. The new comedies of this week, I Feel Pretty and Super Troopers 2, have to fight it out on their own behind the two big movies. At the end, it was the Amy Schumer film that grabbed bronze with more than 16 million, while the sequel to the cult favorite had to stay behind with less than 15 million. Meanwhile, True for Dare's second weekend had a bit of a back burner as it got $8 million on its second weekend, just in front of Ready Player One with 7.5 million and Blockers with 7 million. Following from behind includes Black Panther with less than 5 million, Traffic with less than 4 million, and Isle of Dogs with more than 3 million. Your services in this world will never be forgotten, soldier. R. Lee Aramy has passed away last week at the age of 74 due to complications of pneumonia. It was confirmed by his manager Bill Roggin through his Twitter account. While known to be an actor, beforehand he served in the military for 11 years. That time he spent would help him in Hollywood to gather many roles, including The Boys in Company C, the remix of The Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Seven, Mississippi Burning, Apocalypse Now, and the voice of the Green Army Men in the Toy Story films. However, his most acclaimed role will come from Full Metal Jacket, where he received a Golden Globe nomination. Roggin stated on Facebook, It is a terrible loss that nobody was prepared for. He has meant so much to so many people, and it is extremely difficult to truly quantify all of the great things this man has selflessly done for and on behalf of our many men and women in uniform. He has also contributed many iconic and indelible characters on film that will live on forever. Gunnery Sergeant Hartman of Full Metal Jacket fame was a hard and principled man. The re R. Lee Ermey was a family man, a kind and gentle soul. He was generous to everyone around him, and he especially cared deeply for others in need. He will surely be missed. Forget all the pretty roles, she might go kick some butt for her place! Amy Schumer is in talks to be the star of Christy Martin, the drama biopic about the first woman to sign by boxing promoter Don King and to be a world champion fighter. The movie will look into both her boxing career and her professional life where she was abused by her then-husband Jim Martin, who ended up serving 25 years in prison for shooting and stabbing her after she said that she would dump him for a woman. The movie will be written and directed by Catherine Fugate, the same person who wrote New Year's Eve and Valentine's Day. This will be an interesting move for Schumer, as it would mark her first ever dramatic role if she accepts the part. Her latest comedy, I Feel Pretty from STX, was just released this weekend. Producers that will be involved in the project include Voltage Pictures' Kevin Kane, Alex Madigan, Nicholas Chartier, and Alyssa Phillips, while Jonathan Dechter will come in as an executive producer. The Dragon will be going out of China soon. Sony Pictures revealed that they will be the distributors of the upcoming animated film Wish Dragon, which is directed by Chris Applehaus and made at Base Animation. The worldwide distribution will be a collaborative work between Base, Sony Pictures Animation, and Beijing Sparkle Roll Media Corporation. On top of that, Sony also revealed the English voice cast of the feature, which will include Jackie Chan, Constance Wu, Natasha Liu Bordizo, Will Yun Lee, Jimmy Wong, and Bobby Lee. John Cho and Jimmy O. Yang are in talks to be a part of the film. The story is said to be a modern retelling of the Aladdin story from A Thousand and One Nights, where it will deliver a moral that not everything in life can be easily wished for. This will be added to Chan's new prominent career in animated films, voicing characters in the Kung Fu Panda films, The Nutjob 2, Nutty by Nature, and the Lego Ninjago movie. 
The movie will be released in China in 2019 and at a later date in other places of the world. Well, this will be quite an iconic moment. Steven Spielberg has signed on with Warner Brothers and DC in order to make his first superhero film, Black Hawk. Spielberg will be producing with his Amblin Entertainment banner and will direct the feature. David Coep will be writing the script. Reporters have noted how the superhero is a good fit for Steven, as Black Hawk leads an international squadron of pilots in order to go down and take out the Nazis during World War II. Recently, Spielberg made a massive hit with Warner Brothers by making Ready Player One, which now almost made $500 million at the worldwide box office. The chairman, Toby Emmerich, stated, We are so proud to be the studio behind Steven Spielberg's latest hit, and are thrilled to be working with him again on this new action adventure. We can't wait to see what new ground he will break in introducing Black Hawk to movie audiences worldwide. Black Hawk, when he premiered in 1941 on Military Comics No. 1, was a big seller at Quality Comics, which then the character got bought by DC in 1956. Remember when you're in the ride and you have to avoid the bad guy? Yeah, me either. Disney hired Edgar Ramirez in order to join the cast of the film adaptation of the classic Disneyland attraction, The Jungle Cruise. He will be appearing in the film alongside Dwayne Johnson, Emily Blunt, and Jack Whitehall, who are so far the only ones confirmed. The movie's story will be about a boat captain, played by Johnson, who is on a mission with his siblings to find a tree with healing powers. Ramirez is said to play one of the villains that has a conquistador background. The movie will be directed by Joan Collette Serra and with a new script by, done by Michael Green, who recently was credited for Logan, Blade Runner 2049, and Murder on the Orient Express. Ramirez already has some strong credentials under his belt, appearing in such projects as The Assassination of Gianni Versali, The American Crime Story, The Girl on the Train, Gold, Hands of Stone, and Netflix's Bright. Production is hoping to start next month. Somehow it feels wrong to talk about the villain in a Maleficent movie. Disney hired Ed Skrein in order to be in the cast of the sequel to Maleficent. While the plot is currently unknown, it is confirmed that Skrein will be playing the villain. Both Angelina Jolie and Elle Fanning will reprise their roles as the titular character and Princess Aurora, respectively. The original 2014 film was the official first Disney film created that was based on one of their animated features, which in this case is the 1959 animated classic Sleeping Beauty. The film tells a different story where who many people deemed as one of the best Disney villains of all time is now the superhero and that Aurora's father is a raging lunatic that must be stopped. The sequel will be directed by Joaquin Roning, who recently directed Pirates of the Caribbean, Dead Men Tell No Tales, and written by Linda Wolverton and Jez Buthersworth. Disney is expecting to start production this year. Now that is what I call some crazy additions. The Cannes Film Festival officially announced that they will be adding two infamous films onto their competition. These include Terry Gilliam's The Man Who Killed Don Quixote and Lars von Trier's The House That Jack Built. The former is well known to be a passion project for Gilliam that took him many years, even decades, to create, while the latter is big news because it would make Von Trier's return to the festival after that he was declared persona non grata seven years ago for his comments he made regarding Adolf Hitler. In total, there are now 21 feature films that will be in the competition lineup. They will be added alongside Un Couteau dans le Car, Aika, The Wild Pear Tree, and an adaptation of Ray Badbury's Fahrenheit 451 and Kevin McDonald's documentary about Winnie Houston. The festival also includes Muerte Monstruo Muerte, The Dead and the Others, and Don Bass to the program of Un Certain Regard. The festival will be happening between May 8th and the 19th. This is what the industry would call a big catch. Guillermo del Toro has signed a multi-year deal in order to create animated family films for DreamWorks Animation, where he will take on the role as a writer, producer, and director. He recently signed a similar deal with Fox Searchlight in order to do the same thing, but with live-action films. Del Toro stated, Animation is an art form that has influenced my works greatly since childhood. To me, it's the perfect medium to bring to life any and all ideas, no matter how outlandish or wild. I am eager to work with Chris and the talented artists at DreamWorks, some of the most talented people in the business, to make these images a reality. I have worked with DreamWorks for about a decade and the horizon just keeps getting wider. 
Previously, Del Toro had a strong relationship with DreamWorks by working on several projects. These include being a creative consultant and executive producer of Megamind, Puss in Boots, Rise of the Guardians, and Kung Fu Panda 2 and 3. He is also credited to be the creator of the hit Netflix series Troll Hunters. Oh, we got a new list of people raging out! Sony Pictures and Ravio Entertainment announced the list of actors that will be returning and be newcomers to the sequel to the Angry Birds movie. The people coming back includes Jason Sudeikis, Josh Gad, Danny McBride, Bill Hader, and Peter Dinklage, playing the roles again of Red, Chuck, Bomb, the Pig, Leonard, and the Mighty Eagle, respectively. As for the new stars in the film, they include Rachel Bloom, Sterling K. Brown, Eugenio Derbez, Zach Woods, Aquafina, Little Rel Howerly, Dove Cameron, Beck Bennett, Brooklyn Prince, and Leslie Jones, which the latter will play the new villain. John Cohen, the producer of the movie, stated, I'm thrilled about our incredibly talented filmmaking team and the hilarious people we've brought together for the sequel. We're so happy that Jason, Josh, Bill, Danny, and Peter are back for a second adventure joined by Leslie, Rachel, Sterling, Eugenio, and this awesome ensemble of new talent. The movie will be directed by Thorup Van Orman with a script by Peter Ackerman, and the movie will be released on September 20th, 2019 just in time for the original game's 10th anniversary. And that's all I've got for this week. Thank you guys so much for watching, and don't forget to head on down to film-book.com for all the latest movie and TV news, along with their columns on the box office and their theatrical release schedule. Also, you can follow them on whatever social media you'd like. And while you're at it, you can follow me on my YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter if you're more into stuff like animation, Disney, and my weird sense of humor. If you are watching this on YouTube, then hit that like button and come subscribe to us, and also leave a little comment on what you think on the news this week. If you were listening to this on a podcast on iTunes or any other podcast service, then don't forget to rate and review what you just heard. Tune in next time for another round of Movie News Weekly, and until next week, see you later, dudes!